So the first song we're going to sing tonight is Goranga Bolite Habe. So you can find it on your telephones. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Now, you all should chant with enthusiasm. Sometimes there'll be so many of you and, and it comes really soft like a whisper. But I want to hear you all chant with your heart. Okay? <laughs> Two what? <laughs> Too many. Okay. Goranga Bolite Havi. I'm waiting on you. <laughs> mm. Go rango bolite habe Pula ka shanira Hari Hari Bolite Nayane Babenira Go Rango Bolite Habe Hari Hari Boli Tena Yoni Babini Benitai Chande Koruna Hoi Be Aroko Benitai Chande Koruna Hoi Be Let 
Online. thinking
that tonight we c I wanted to sing a song about our Guru Parampara, our illustrious Guru Parampara. So if you look up in your songbook, it's entitled Sri Guru Parampara and it's written by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He's the one that revealed our Guru Parampara. And you may notice that it's just like in the Bhagavad Gita, there's a list of Guru Parampara given. And it's not, a, it's not a long list, it's not a big list. And the reason is, it's a Shiksha Guru Parampara, not Diksha. So, These um, Bhakti Siddhanta traced from Bhaktivinoda Thakur, his father, he got information and he traced them out following the shiksha, the teachings. There were many more gurus, but these, uh, these ones stand out because of their literary contribution, you know? So they were, they are acharyas. The Prabhupada once said, the first business of an acharya is to give some literary contribution, to write. And that lasts a long time, just like we get one of the primary literary works of uh, our Guru Parampara was written by Srila Rupa Goswami, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which Prabhupada did a, a presentation of, a summary study of, and he called it The Nectar of Devotion. It's the most important book because it gives devotees an understanding of what is, what is Krishna Consciousness how to do it. <laughs> it's a real handbook for devotees. So, anyway, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he traced out the Guru Parampas, the line which begins with Krishna, of course. <laughs> begins with Krishna, go then to Brahma, Brahma to Narada, Narada to Vyas, and it comes down, 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 all the way to, you know, Prabhupada. And so, it's a very important song, but we should know. What is our lineage? What are we connected to? This sampradaya. Sampradaya is important. Hmm? There's even a verse, and I'm not sure if it's Bhagavatam or which says, if your mantra doesn't come through sampradaya, then you don't know what you have. But we can know we have we be, we are connected to a very illustrious group of saintly persons, very uh, and they've given so much. They've left behind works to help us 
and future devotees. So this is mm. you ready? <laughs> Krishna hoite chatur muka hoi Krishna sevan muka. Krishna hoite chatur muka hoi Krishna sevam muka Brahma hoite narade ramati Krishna hoite chatur muka hoy Krishna sevam muka Brahma hoite narade ramati Jaya 
धर्म दशे क्षति श्री पुरुष समाजति सतीर्थ हर दास लक्ष्मीपति व्यास दास दास तीर्थ हर दास श्री चैतन्य जगत गुरु गौर महाप्रभु महाप्रभु श्री चैतन्य राधा कृष्ण नही अन्य रूपानुग जाने रजीवन Oh, 
ندارم را چرا کن فیل باکتی به دنس نما پاتی تا جانی تدای ارزاما Translation, in the beginning of creation, the science of devotional service was received from, it was received by the four-headed Brahma from the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. How? It is said in Bhagavad, Tene Brahmaridaya Adikavaye, from the heart. When Brahma appeared, there was no one else around. <laughs> but he was giving instructions from within. The Lord is within the heart of everyone. He says so in Bhagavad Gita. Every living. He's there, he's here, he's here, everywhere. And he can speak, he's not dumb. You know, the Mayavadis try to make the Supreme as deaf, dumb, and blind. <laughs> but no, he can speak, he has senses, but transcendental senses. His body is transcendental. And there is nowhere where he is not, he's everywhere. And at the same time, go loko eva nebashiti akilata bhutto akilata. He's there in Goloka while he's everywhere. <laughs> so he spoke to Brahma and gave him the science. Then Devarshi or Devarishi Narada. Narada is like of all the demigods, Narada is, is the best. So, so he's called Deva Rishi Narada. So Narada's understanding of this science, divine science, was obtained from Brahma. Then the great sage Krishna Dwaipayana Vyas, who was empowered to compile the Vedic literatures, he became a disciple of Devarishi Narada. So Narada is the guru of Vyas. Then Sripad Madhvacharya, we've heard his name many times, powerful Acharya. Sripad Madhvacharya, who is the founder of the Shuddha Dvaita school of Vedanta philosophy. He visited Srila Vyas Dev at Badarik Ashram in the 13th century to learn Vedanta philosophy from him. 
Hari Bol, welcome. So, 13th century means not too long ago, <laughs> according to how you look at it. But Prabhupada commented in his, one of his purports that Srila Vyas is still there in Badrikashram. But who can go and see him? <laughs> you have to be a very qualified person. So Madhvacharya, he was able to go. And he learned Vedanta from Vyas. Then he says, another name of Madhvacharya is Purnapragya Tirtha. Purnapragya Tirtha. So he, Madhva, is the guru and sole refuge of Padmanabha Tirtha. So from Madhvachara comes Padmanabha Tirtha. Two other principal disciples of Madhvacharya were Narihari Tirtha and Madhava Tirtha. So he had Padmanabha Tirtha, Narihari Tirtha, and Madhava Tirtha. These are all prominent disciples of Madhvacharya. Madhva, Madhava Tirtha accepted the great Paramhansa Akshobhya Tirtha as a disciple. And the principal disciple, see it's going down, the principal disciple of Akshobhya Tirtha was known as Jaya Tirtha. Papa has one disciple named Jaya Tirtha. Then Jaya Tirtha's service was for his disciple Jnana Sindhu. These are all the you know, luminaries, great personalities before. Dayanidhi or Dayanidhi was the servant of Jnana Sindhu. So he received the teachings, the science of bhakti from him. And then the servant of Dayanidhi was Vidyanidhi, Rajendra Tirtha became a disciple of Vidyanidhi and Rajendra's, Rajendra Tirtha's servant was known as Jaya Dharma or Vyadvaja Tirtha. In this way, you should properly understand our disciplic succession. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati is saying. Then the great sannyasi, Sri Purushottam Tirtha, he received his knowledge in the service of his guru, Jaya Dharma. Purushottam Tirtha comes from Jaya Dharma. The principal disciple of Purushottam Tirtha was Subramanya Tirtha. They are so long ago that we don't know, we don't hear about them, but they are there. So, Subramanya Tirtha was the principal disciple of Purushottam Tirtha, 
And his disciple was the great Vyasa Tirtha. Vyasa Tirtha. Vyasa Tirtha's disciple was Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. And Lakshmi Pati Tirtha was the great Madhavendra Puri. We're getting closer to, to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Madhavendra Puri. The chief disciple of Madhavendra Puri was, who knows, Ishwar. Ishwar Puri. He also had two other disciples who were incarnations. <laughs> incarnations of Godhead, namely Sri Nityananda and Sri Advaita Acharya. Imagine that Guru has two incarnations as disciples. See Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was who is the spiritual master or preceptor of all the worlds, he accepted Ishwara Puri. He made Ishwara Puri greatly before greatly fortunate by accepting him as his spiritual master. <laughs> then he says, Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Bhakti Siddhanta was fond of quoting this line from his song. Means that Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya is non-different from Sri Radha and Krishna. And is the very life of the Vaishnavas who follow Srila Rupa Goswami, Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. They were all givers of great happiness to Vishwambar Sri Chaitanya. Chief disciples. The great souls, Jiva Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami, they became very dear to Rupa Goswami. They were much younger. I think Jiva Goswami was a nephew of Rupa Goswami, Rupa and Sanatana. <coughs> So, Jiva Goswami was a disciple of Rupa Goswami. But what a disciple! He's counted in, he's one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. But Rupa Goswami was his guru. And Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami was a disciple of Advaita Acharya's disciple, Yadunandana Acharya. He was accepted, this is Raghunath Das Kusham, was accepted by Rupa and Sanatan as their third brother. <laughs> Raghunath Das Goswami's beloved student was the venerable Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was an intimate friend of Lokanath Goswami. They lived together in Vrindavan and they always discussed the topics of Krishna with one another. <laughs> Lokanath Goswami was a disciple of Gadadhar Pandit. And Lokanath Goswami had only one disciple, who was Narottam Das Thakur. We were talking today, Hari Kirtan and his wife and myself, 
how Bhakti Siddhant, uh, uh, Gorkishaw Das Babaji, he didn't want to take any disciples. He didn't want anybody to serve him. He refused many, uh, many requests. Other people were requesting and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was also requesting this to be his disciple on the order or recommendation of his father, Bhakti Thakur. And still, Gokishwadas Babaji said, no, no, no. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati finally convinced him. They said, on one occasion, he approached him many times. On one occasion, Gokishwadas said, all right, I'll, 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 I'll accept you, but first I have to ask Mahaprabhu. He's going to ask Mahaprabhu. So Bhakti Siddhanta said, all right. And the next time they met, he asked him, so what did Mahaprabhu say? Gokishore Das Babaji Maharaj, he said, oh, I forgot. <laughs> he just really didn't want any disciples. So sometimes these great souls behave like this. So Lokanath Goswami, he also didn't want. And Narutam approached him many times, begging him. He wouldn't. It's Nar uh, Naratam came up with a, a plan how he can serve him. It's a nice little story. He began, you could say, stalking Lokanath Goswami, following him around, seeing what he does every day, where does he go. <laughs> and he's living in the bread. He, we said that um, he was good friends with Krishna Das, intimate friend with Krishna Das Kaviraj. So Narutam followed him around, and he saw that every day he would cross Jamuna and go to the other side. You know, he'd like get out of Vrindavan, cross Jamuna. And he would go into the forest to take care of his bodily, you know. You have a material body, you have a body, there, there are things that come. <laughs> and he followed him, and when he, when Lokanath Goswami left, go back to cross, Naruto went and cleaned up, cleaned his stool dug a hole in the ground, buried it, smoothed it out. So next day when, when Lokanath came, he came to the same area, the same spot, he noticed somebody's been here cleaning up after me. Who is that rascal? I don't want anybody to serve me for anything. Somebody is. He couldn't imagine who. So he made like, as he did his business and he left, but he backtracked, he came back and he caught Narottam <laughs> cleaning up and he chastised him. You rascal, how dare you? I don't want anybody. To. He said, you wouldn't, I asked you so many times, you wouldn't accept me. And it is my desire to serve you. If you don't accept me, then my life is useless. So Lokanath saw this boy is very sincere, so he accepted him. That was his only disciple. But Narottam went on to have thousands of disciples. <laughs> Same as Bhakti Siddhanta had many, many disciples. But he was the only disciple of Gokishore. 
Narottam Das Thakur was always engaged in the service of his Guru and he also engaged himself in the service of his Guru's intimate friend. Who was that? Lokanath's intimate friend, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. So he was always, he became dear to Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. Then, after, to serve the lotus feet of Narottam Das Thakur was the only desire of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, who was the fourth Acharya in the cyclic succession from Narottam Das. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was the Shiksha Guru of Baladev Vidyabhushan. Prabhupada was very fond of Baladev Vidyabhushan's writing, mentions that. Then Jagannath Das Babaji, he was a very prominent Acharya, Babaji. He was a prominent Acharya after Baladev Vidyabhushan. And he, Jagannath Das Babaji, was the beloved Shiksha Guru of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur's intimate friend and associate was the eminent, preeminent Mahabhagavata Srila Gaurakishwara Das Babaji, whose only joy was found in Hari Bhajan chanting. And then Bhakti Siddhanta says, these greatly, great saintly Vaishnavas are all Paramhansas, all the names we sang. They are devotees of the highest order, and they are all part of Lord Goranga's own spiritual family. Their holy feet are my refuge, I take shelter there. I have no real interest, this is Bhaktisiddhanta's humility, I have no real interest in devotional service. I am just a poor and lowly Tridandi Sanyasi name, Sri Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. So, these are, this is Sri Guru Parampara, after Bhaktisiddhanta, our Prabhupada was a prominent disciple and his contribution is huge. He took it out and brought the teachings out of India, went around the world. So, it's uh, so we are fortunate to come under the shelter of Srila Prabhupada, who is connecting us to all these paramhansas. So, it's only seven o'clock already. But we can sing one more, right? Nobody minds. <laughs> so,
How about Parama Karuna? Parama Karuna is by Lochanda Astaku. Let's do this one in Dotal. Parama Karuna Pahudvijana Nithai Gorachandra Karuna Pahudi Jana Nitai Gura Chandra Sarvaya Bhatta Sarashiro Mani Oh, 
Since we went over time, I won't talk long. <laughs> but one line in that song, second verse, Bojo Bojo Bhai Chaitanya Nidai Suridha Bishvasha Kori. He says, We must chant with firm conviction and faith. Vishvasa Kori. If we want to get the benefit of this chanting, we must chant with firm conviction and faith. These two lords, Bahudvijana, are very merciful. They'll give themselves to you. It is said in another song by Narottam Das Thakur, oh, Burashukir Kabogai. No, that's Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Burashuke Kapogai. <laughs> he says, um, if Nitananda Prabhu sees someone chanting sincerely and there's a tear, a tear in his eyes, he will give all resources to that person. We sing one song in the morning. Well, Bajagurangu, Kahagurangu, Lahagurangu, Namire, Ye Jana Guranga Baji, Sehoi Amar Pranire. This was sung by Nitananda Prabhu himself. <laughs> and he, he was telling people if you, you just if you chant Goranga's name, worship Goranga, Bajagurangu, Kahagurangu. He said that. You, you'll become so dear to me, I'll give myself to you. <laughs> so, we should chant, chant with firm conviction and faith. Surira Vishvasha Kori. All right? Then, uh, tomorrow morning, We'll be here again, nine o'clock. So, Haribo.